Hey, Risa. Coaches have talked a little bit about Hayden Whitehead as a leader in special teams, and he talked about, you know, kind of getting the punt coverage units aligned. What, what have you seen from him in terms of that role that he's taken on uh, for, for the special teams units? Um, he's a he's a great leader for the special teams because he's just always on point. He's always doing what he's asked, and he does it right. You, you would know, he's always got a smile on his face. He's always the the top dog on on special teams. He 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 gets the whole special teams. Any special teams he's on, he gets the that whole unit right. He he makes sure everybody's on point. He makes sure everybody is doing what they need to be in the right spot. And I feel like he he's a great leader at that at that role. All right, Dylan, then Zach. Hey, Reese. Uh, obviously, you know, you guys have done a pretty good job, you know, cover, covering the passes and whatnot, but just the job the corners have done, sort of blitzing the quarterback or blowing up run plays in the backfield. I mean, how explosive kind of do you guys feel you are kind of coming off the edge there? Uh, we're, we're really explosive, I feel, as because we, 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 we trigger when we need to trigger and we see the right play calls and coach give us the right play calls. It, it, it makes us, it's a, it's a trigger in our head to know that the run's coming. And we know it's coming because the study film that we get into and how deep we get into it and how much we practice and how locked in we are in practice. So it's just, it really ties down to how focused we is in practice. So when we play and we trigger really fast, it depends on what run is coming and what pass is going at the same time. All right, Zach, then John. I guess kind of, <clears throat> sorry, along those lines, I know you and Jalen and Taiwan have talked about, you know, wanting to be playmakers, be it in the run, in the pass, wherever. But how much do you kind of encourage maybe some of the younger guys in the room to, to look at what you're doing? You guys played young. You've come up together. How much do you encourage maybe some of the younger guys to say, hey, listen, this is this is what it needs to look like for you guys as you start to get older? Uh, we always make sure the young guys have a right mindset, like in practice or even if they get in the game. We just got to make sure that they, they up-tempo with us as well. But we always make sure they in the right spot. We always coaching them up on the little things, on the, on the small things and the techniques. Even when they do something great, we, we, we still tell them what's wrong and the little things that they do because it's not – everybody's going to patch on your back. But if you mess up once, it's, it's really still on you, though. So, like like I said, the, the corner room, it's a, it's a real-life brotherhood because we tell her the, the, the good things and the bad things. It's not just about the good things. All right, John, then Paul. I'm just going back to the recruiting process. Obviously, everybody knows, like, what a great quarterback you were in high school, a playmaker you were at that position. Um, like, Kyler Murray's now, you know, a smaller quarterback having success playing that position. Is there ever a moment where you look back and say, like, I wonder what I could do as a quarterback? Or or, um, or does, that, does that ever pop into your mind, I guess? Of course. I, I, I miss offense a lot. I ain't going to lie to you because it's just – when the ball is on hand, I just feel natural. That's why I like punt return so well because it's I just like having the ball in my hands. I feel like I can make plays. But me at quarterback, it was just a fun. It was just a on. Oh, I just like it. Like it was just a fun position for me. It was just natural to me. I could just. I feel like I was in control of the offense, which made me like, not say I have more power over them, but it just made me feel like I could control the game. I can control the speed, and I just I just I liked it that, but. But me at corner, I, I feel like I can still do that because we all work in together as a defense and we all have our own voice on the defense. But at quarterback, I, I feel like I do the same thing. All right, Paul and Matt. Hey, Reese, as, as someone who played high school ball in this state and was familiar with IU, it, does it mean a little bit more to you to be, be part of the, the team that's turned the program around a little bit? Of course, just because it, it, this is my home state and everybody really goes off IU as they pass, which is now being turned around and me being a part of it. It's, it's, I'm, I'm going to always remember this as a memory that I was a part of this team that turned the Indiana around and made it a football school as well, just instead of a basketball school. But me being a part of it, it's, it's really like historic because like I'm going to always remember this. I can tell my family and my kids, my wife about it later that I was a part of this team. And probably my picture is probably gonna be up right here somewhere in the in the hallway hall of fame. All right, Matt, and then back to John. Hey, Reese, how's it going? Good. How about you? I'm okay. I talked about playing quarterback. <clears throat> I went back and watched the game against Michigan, and the the announcer talked about how you and the other guys, Taiwan and, and um, Jalen, are are so good at, with your eyes and reading the quarterback and what he's going to do. Obviously, you didn't play defense very much before coming to Indiana. 
how much did playing quarterback help you kind of grow into that and, and kind of know what a quarterback might be thinking before he makes makes a decision? Um, it, playing quarterback really helped me a lot because I understand the the concepts that, are, that that from receivers that are being ran. I understand what the quarterback reads in defenses. I understand like what quarterbacks are looking for in defenses. I understand how how quarterbacks read rotation, throw away from rotation, and I understand that they always try to misconcept from defense, like using their eyes a lot. So really, quarterbacks really don't stare on one side the most time. That's how I really understand defense. I mean, the quarterback a lot because. When you play quarterback and then you move the defense, you understand what the quarterback is really trying to do and try to switch up the uh, offense really for you so it really makes sense to you. All right, John, last one for Reese. Uh, again, just in terms of the position switch, um, did you, did, did a coach or did anybody like tell you something and have a conversation with you to convince you that corner was the right thing? Or did you have an idea in your mind that that could be a position you could play or what really like convinces you that, that this is the position that you can best fit in and, and make an impact. Um, when I first got here, me and Coach Allen had a long talk, and he it wasn't no convincing. It wasn't no, you should do this, you should do this. He he asked me, what do I want to do when I play here, when I get here? And I told him I wanted to play corner because I, kn I knew Mike was here. I'm not saying I'm backing down from Mike. I'm not saying that we was going to back. But I knew he's a good quarterback, and I know he could take us far, and I knew he's a – He's a, a great player that can take this 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 team really to a, the next level, and I knew I could help the defense a lot, uh, out a lot, and I think me and Quarter can uh, can really make me be a, a a better team leader, and I feel like that um, in the next level I could play corner. All right, Reese. Thank you. Thank you.